Welcome to part 7 of the Live Steam Charles Loco build, and welcome to my workshop in Garden Railway. Please like and subscribe. As I mentioned in the part 3 video, the cylinder bores were found to be tapered undersized by 2 thou or 0.05mm at the rear when boring in the lathe. I decided to correct this by lapping. I am pleased to say that they are now no more than half a thou or 13 microns out of parallel. I wanted to get the bores finished before I turned the cylinder covers. It's important that the rear covers sit true to the bore for the sake of the piston rod passing smoothly through. They've got to have great concentricity. A lap needed making. I've been reading some online PDFs of lapping articles. As there is little material to remove, I eventually decided on a simple non-adjustable lap. The bores are 13 16 inch diameter or 20.6 mil. So I started with a piece of 3 quarter inch round bar and a piece of 3 quarter inch bore copper water pipe. The copper is for the lap material itself. As it's softer than the brass cylinder, hopefully the abrasive will embed in the copper and not the cylinder. The copper pipe is longer than the bore. I annealed the copper to make it as soft as possible and to enable it to be distorted in the three jaw chuck to better fit the mandrel as it was a bit too loose. The copper was glued to the mandrel with ordinary super glue. The bond was good, withstanding turning and lapping. The copper was turned to size, about a thou under size, as allowance must be made for the abrasive particles. I used the top slide for the turning, making the rear one thou larger than the front. The copper turned nicely with a sharp tool. Lapping was started with Holtz fine grade lapping paste from an automotive valve grinding kit. This removed material quite quickly. I started by rotating the lap at about 300 RPM. I went up to 600 in the end. I finished the cylinders using the abrasive sludge from Brasso polishing liquid. I've evaporated a quantity of Brasso and then mixed oil with the remainder to make a paste that wouldn't keep evaporating on me. All the former abrasive paste was removed from the lap and replaced with the Brasso paste. The lapping process was sliding the cylinder up and down the rotating lap, leaving the lap protruding from both ends of the cylinder to avoid bell mouthing. I had one chance of getting this right. Thanks for watching.